This is News 8 Now, this morning. So far, we have no kids here. Um, it's just an all-ages show, which means it's PG. Um, so uh, costumes are modest, and the content of the songs is not explicit. So parents can make their decision on whether or not they want children in. But so far, we don't have anyone under the age of 18 yet. I feel like all of my drivers should be able to identify and and um, verify that the bus is in good working order before they leave. We enjoy just bringing different food to the area, showcasing some things that um, you know we don't normally have on our menu. Love is in the air, and love is in the food. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for watching News 8 Now. I'm Dua Shar. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is February 15, 2023. Happy Wednesday, halfway through the week. Halfway through the week, almost there. Almost there. Yep. Derek, how was your morning? I, you know, so far pretty good. I know it was a little bit gusty outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, it still is, right? So I guess those of you that are working on the hair, I might want to take it easy. Be careful, a, a plan accordingly, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it is uh, blowing out there pretty good. As Eric Dean would say, a hair cast. Yeah, a hair in, cast, exactly. It's in session. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Make sure to take those necessary precautions with the hair uh, because it is rather gusty. And I got to say, too, it's pretty chilly outside as well. So not only do you probably have to watch out for your hair and clothes and things like that, but also you want to make sure that you dress warm, too, because we are looking at some pretty chilly conditions. But I do want to show you here these last 24 hours of our radar and satellite loop perspective because, you know, yesterday was a pretty wet day, right? We had a bunch of rain that moved through, and some of that rain even did contain some heavy downpours at times, but it does look look like the majority of all that is now mainly focused along our central zones. Areas like southern Buffalo and also into southern Trempeleau County looking at a very light rain and snow mix. The rest of us just looking cloudy and very windy in response to this exiting low pressure system. And you can see those current wind gusts anywhere anywhere between 20 to 30 miles an hour in many spots. In fact, there is a gust that was reported up to 43 miles an hour to our west in Rochester. Let's take a look now at your planner. Cloudy skies, very windy uh, temperatures uh, dropping here into the 30s uh, throughout the day. And we will be talking about possible maybe slim snow chances as we head into the day tomorrow. We'll talk more about that, plus a lot more as far as what our wind speeds could look like for some of us here in the full weather forecast today. Dua? Thanks, Derek. Let's get to some news this morning. La Crosse police have arrested a Prairie du Chien man on Monday night. 42-year-old Peter Green and a woman were yelling loudly inside an SUV at a quick trip on Losey Boulevard. Police say they followed the SUV to a house where an unidentified woman left the car and headed inside, insisting she was OK. The officer stopped Green at a nearby church parking lot where Green reportedly refused to exit the car for over an hour. He was charged with felony bail jumping, obstructing an officer and disorderly conduct. Green virtually appeared in court from La Crosse County Jail where he took issue with the state calling for a $2,500 cash bond. I don't have any money and I'm not, I'm not going to make my dad's funeral. I'm not going to get to bury my father. Green has six other active cases across two counties, including possession of meth and domestic violence and strangulation. A Wisconsin woman accused of murder and dismemberment attacked her own attorney during a competency hearing Tuesday. The attack happened after the judge said the trial would be delayed. A deputy quickly wrestled 25-year-old Taylor Shaw Business to the ground. Shaw Business is accused of strangling a man to death, then sexually abusing him. Authorities say body parts were found in her home. Shaw Business has pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. Her trial will be on May 15th. We have an update on the investigation of a racist incident at Black River Falls High School. The BRF school district superintendent has confirmed to News 8 Now that the staff member accused of making a racist comment has resigned. The student recorded the exchange last week and reported it to high school officials. In an interview last week, the student said she hopes things change because people who look at people of color look at them different. Protesters and anti-protesters showed up at an all-ages drag show on Valentine's Day. The drag show took place at the Bronze Dragon. The protesters carried signs across the street telling people to keep kids away from the drag show. One protester says he's happy about the venue being an alcohol-free bar, but is concerned about kids going to the show. 
We just feel that children are very impressionable. And so the fact that they are being influenced by adults in a otherwise adult setting, in our opinion, is um, inappropriate. The owner of the Bronze Dragon says the space is open to all people of all ages. This is a grand opening celebration for the tavern, and the owner says they wanted to show that everyone is welcome. So far, we have no kids here. Um, it's just an all ages show, which means it's PG. Um, so uh, costumes are modest and the content of the songs is not explicit. So parents can make their decision on whether or not they want children in. But so far, we don't have anyone under the age of 18 yet. The owner says there are no hard feelings between the Bronze Dragon and protesters. Well, as we know, Valentine's Day is one of the busiest restaurant service days of the year, and La Crosse is full of wonderful fine dining options. But yesterday on Valentine's Day, one chef elevated his menu to give diners a romantic night. Jacob McLeese is the head chef of Fork and Fable. He prepared a romantic four course dinner exclusive for last night. We enjoy just bringing different food to the area, showcasing some things that um, you know, we don't normally have on our menu. McLeese has been in the restaurant business for over 25 years. As he closes on his second year at Fork and Fable, he hopes his passion translates into the food he makes. My favorite thing to make is uh, happy customers. I like people to leave here happy. Love is in the air and love is in the food. The exclusive menu included oysters, beef tenderloin, and scallops, and for dessert, chocolate-covered cherries. Well, still ahead on your morning news, the new device to help stop Kia and Hyundai car thefts. We'll explain that and the measures lawmakers are taking to make sure social media is safer for everyone. That's all coming up after the break. For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. Do you love Peep's marshmallow candy so much that you just can't get enough? Well, thanks to Pepsi, there's now a Peep flavored soda. Pepsi is bringing the Peep flavored soda to store shelves, but only for a limited time. Pepsi and Peep's will only be available in mini cans and 20 ounce bottles for a limited time. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a whole lot of sweetness in one small packaging. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning is after the break. Well, as that low pressure system that was bringing us the wet conditions yesterday continues to leave us, we're still feeling some effects of the system here in some spots with uh, some scattered light areas of rain and snow, mainly here in southern Buffalo County and also southeast into southern Trempolo County, right around the Gale, Arcadia, Winona area, and also into Holman, looking at some of that very light rain or snow. But the rest of us just looking very cloudy and gusty, and temperatures here have already reached their highs here in many spots across the Cooley region into the 40s, and our temperatures will just continue to drop down uh, throughout the day. We are going to be looking at temperatures into the upper 30s this morning across our central zones because remember again, these are just our high temperatures as these values will continue to drop down under those cloudy and gusty conditions currently moving through. Bus stop forecast this morning looking cloudy and windy temperatures at 38 degrees and when we come back, you'll notice that it will be a little cooler with uh, temperature readings at 33 degrees this afternoon underneath those cloudy and gusty weather conditions to to work with dog walking conditions out there cloudy and windy here for the morning. The same can be said here for your afternoon, but the evening walks look a little bit better. Still looking cloudy, but not as gusty. We'll talk about those winds coming up in the full weather forecast in just a bit. Hyundai and Kia are fixing a problem that made their vehicles easy to steal. Vehicles with turn in keys are twice as likely to be stolen because of the lack of basic auto theft prevention technology. To fix the problem, the two companies are offering a software patch. The patch will be installed for free on vulnerable models with software that requires an actual key in the ignition to turn on the vehicle as opposed to a USB cable that thieves use to steal cars. Inflation is still high, but consumer experts say some prices are cooling down. 
The Bureau of Labor Statistics says annual inflation was 6.4% in January. While that's down from December, it's still higher than economists' expectations. But despite the increase in inflation, appears to be decreasing. Last week, the Federal Reserve said the process to bring down inflation would take some time, which could mean more rate hikes in the future. Subway confirms it's temporarily up for sale. In a statement, the fast food chain says it's exploring possibilities. The company says it has no indication or timing of assurance a sale will happen. The sandwich chain is valued at more than $10 billion. According to a Wall Street Journal article, Subway is prospering from a revamped menu, store renovations, and international growth. Child advocates, including a mother who lost her son to cyberbullying and a college student who said she was addicted to social media, are calling on Congress to take action to protect kids online. The Senate Judiciary Committee listened to their testimony as it considers the first legislation to regulate social media platforms in decades. Dina Demetrius has the story. Kristen Bride took on social media companies after her 16-year-old son Carson took his own life in June of 2020. The Oregon mother said she had no idea her son had been relentlessly cyberbullied by anonymous tormentors. After his death, we discovered that Carson had received nearly 100 negative, harassing, sexually explicit and humiliating messages. Bride was unsuccessful in her lawsuit against at least two social media companies. She's urging Congress to take action. We need lawmakers to step up, put politics aside and finally protect all children online. Kids face a variety of online dangers, including anxiety, depression, eating disorders, financial and sexual exploitation. The predators are winning. Our children are not safe and those who are fiercely committed to protecting them are drowning. College student Emma Lebke told senators she became addicted to online apps in the sixth grade. As my screen time increased, my mental and physical health suffered. Lemke implored lawmakers to include young people in the conversation as it considers bipartisan legislation to keep kids safe online. Unregulated social media is a weapon of mass destruction that continues to jeopardize the safety privacy and well-being of all American youth. It's time to act. There hasn't been any meaningful federal legislation to regulate the internet for 25 years before most of the platforms kids use today even existed. Like we do in the real world, we need to protect our kids in the virtual world. So far, only five states, California, Utah, Colorado, Virginia, and Connecticut have passed internet privacy laws. The former commander of the New Jersey State Police's Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force told senators that law enforcement just doesn't have the resources it needs to investigate hundreds of thousands of new cases every year. Well, that's it for your consumer news. Let's check in with Derek and get today's forecast. All right, Dua, thanks for that. Sure is a pretty gusty start outside this morning. Here's City Cam 8, and you can see every now and then the camera kind of bumps around because of those windy conditions that we're currently experiencing. Coming out of the west-northwest around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Eau Claire, you're currently at 35. Winona's at 36 with some light rain moving through in some parts of the area. 38 degrees the temperature right now in La Crosse. And we are going to be experiencing our temperatures dropping steadily throughout the day underneath those cloudy and windy conditions to also work with. I do want to show you these last 24 hours though because if you remember it very it was a very wet day we had a lot of rain start to move through late morning yesterday continued into the afternoon also at night where some of those uh, showers did become heavy at times now as that system continues to exit our weather has drastically improved and in fact we are only looking at a couple of scattered light areas of some rain and snow these are mainly focused here around uh, from around southern buffalo county into southern trempolo county and now approaching portions of extreme northwestern lacrosse county other than that uh, skies are just looking very cloudy and our winds are picking up here too associated with this departing low pressure system that continues to move towards the east and it has affected our wind gust here too anywhere anywhere between around 20 to 30 mile per hour plus winds have been observed especially across our southern communities and our southern zones here maybe not as strong here to the north but we are looking at around a 43 mile per hour wind gust even that was observed just earlier in Rochester and these wind speeds what you're looking at here these are sustained values 
skies now, and we will probably continue to see 20 to 30 mile per hour wind speeds at times here throughout the morning, and which will continue as we head into the afternoon hours here too. So it's really not until we fast forward into this evening and also into overnight tonight where we start to see some of the evidence of the winds calming down as that low continues to move away. In addition to that, we are also tracking some light areas of rain and snow here, as mentioned before, throughout the morning, mainly to the north and then exiting. Everything comes to a close by the early afternoon. Then we're left over with cloudy and cooler temperatures here to work with pretty much throughout the rest of the day there as you can see and here comes our next system it's going to be another low uh, moving in and it does look like it looks like probably uh, kind of clipping us towards the east and southeast therefore it does look like a lot of the snow here is going to be mainly focused here along our southern communities for early tomorrow morning and then you can see probably still dealing with some of that light snow mainly to the south of us as we head into the early afternoon before it all begins to uh, exit the area and uh, mainly partly cloudy skies with cooler temperatures once again to work with uh, for your uh, Thursday into Friday time frame. Now, as we head into this weekend, we're going to be warming back up. And in fact, we're going to be as warm as the low 40s come Saturday. That will continue into Sunday. And then we're going to get cooler again for much of next week as highs drop into the into the 30s. We'll watch out for another chance of snow, though, for uh, Tuesday of next week. Stay with us. We're back with much more news and weather, and that's still to come here on News 8 now this morning. But for now, we're sending you a break with a look at what happened on this day in history for February 15th. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Blitz. High school hoops are still a big deal as we get closer and closer to the playoffs, but high school wrestling taking center stage last night. Teams all across the state looking to punch their ticket to the state tournament in Madison. That includes Aquinas, Blue Golds traveling to Cash to face Iowa Grand Highland. At 106, the Blue Golds' Roger Fleggy gets a pin in just 70 seconds. And at 113, Jake Fitzpatrick collects a pin in just under three minutes. We're tied at 12. At 126, IGH's Hunter Stevens gets the takedown on his way to a decision win. That's part of a 14-point run for Iowa Grand Highland. 152, Tate Fleggy gets the pin for six big points. Blue Golds trail by eight. At 182, Aquinas' David Moline getting the Blue Golds a little closer. Another pin, another six points. Aquinas down just four. 195, Tyson Martin needs less than a minute to get the pin, giving the Blue Golds their first lead of the night. So it comes down to 220, where IGH's Bodie Brockhop gets a pin to secure a come-from-behind win. Heartbreak for the Blue Golds as they fall 38 to 34. Holman also falling in their sectional, but PDC is headed to Team State after scoring a big come from behind win. Let's go to the hardwood. Big matchup in the Dairyland. Blair Taylor, a perfect 22 and 0 so far this season. Alma Center Lincoln looking to change that first half. Home team comes out red hot. Abby Thompson knocks down the three. And then look at this fine. Samantha Kidd puts in the long two. Blair Taylor goes up six. And Lindsey Steen again. Perfect one handed pass here right on the money to Thompson for the score. Wildcats go up a dozen, but here come the Hornets. Look at that pass. Liza Cummings to Ruby Paul for the deuce. That cuts it to nine, and then it's Cummings. Top of the key, three, book it, and the senior not done. Same spot, same result. Hornets within two at the break, and Lincoln looking for more in the second half. Maya Breheim splashes home the triple. How about those Hornets? Alma Center Lincoln knocks off Blair Taylor. Hornets hand the Wildcats their first loss of the season. Lincoln takes it 67 to 65. Rick Wagner and the 19 and one West Salem boys hosting Wisconsin Dells last night. Pick it up in the second half. All Panthers, Peter Latos off the mark, but Brett McConkie is there to clean up the mess. West Salem goes up 69 28. They add to it a few moments later. Kyle Helly launches from way downtown. Splash, Panthers on cruise control. Everyone getting in on the action. This time it's Jeremiah Miller letting it fly from deep. That's pure 75-33 Panthers. Miller is gonna be trapped here in the corner, but he somehow finds Joe Sullivan top of the key. He drains the three. West Salem breaks the 80 point mark. Panthers roll past the Dells 93 to 49. Up next, Aquinas traveling up to Cotter to take on the Ramblers in a non-conference matchup. Cotter, hot in the first half. The senior, Alana Koner, is going to knock down the corner three. 
on senior night. Then later in the half, it's senior Alyssa Williams. She's going to pump fake, hit the jumper to stretch the Rambler lead to seven. But the Blue Golds wouldn't back down. Maddie Murphy connects on the three. That ties the game. And then later in the half, it's Macy Donarski's step back three. This would put the Blue Golds up five. And then a couple plays later, it's Donarski again, this time connecting from deep. Blue Golds hang on for the win, 57 to 48. That's going to do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. In Wisconsin, it's school bus driver appreciation week, but there's still a nationwide shortage. News 8 Now's Emily Haugen explains how a new waiver from the DMV is supposed to help get more drivers behind the wheel. For many school kids, taking the bus is part of their routine. Each and every day they go to events, uh, Monday through Fridays and, and on weekends. For bus drivers, it's so much more. The cargo we hold or we transport every day is so precious, right? It's not like ice cream or a commodity. It's, it's irreplaceable valuables. As West Salem Schools Transportation Director Rick Klein helps those drivers hit the road. He teaches new drivers like Angela Devonport. Hinges are in good condition. She's about to take her first bus load this week. Anxious, but excited. <laughs> One of Klein's requirements for his drivers is to know fluid. what's under the you hood. You check the level. The Wisconsin DMV has extended a waiver that says drivers don't need to know those mechanics. Klein disagrees with the waiver. Because I feel like all of my drivers should be able to identify and verify that the bus is in good working order before they leave. The extension is an effort by the DMV to put more school bus drivers behind the wheel. But Klein and his staff see it differently. We're transporting dozens of kids every day. Um, what if we break down? Like that's something we could easily notice before we left. Klein offers a different solution improve the culture for drivers. They're going to have to treat them more like professionals. They're professional drivers. Keeping drivers like Devonport prepared and supported. Parents are trusting us. As the first and last person to see kids every school day. In West Salem, Emily Haugen, News 8 Now. The Under the Hood waiver has been extended until November of 2024. We have more information on how to become a bus driver on our website, that's news8000.com. Well, on Monday, we had the opportunity to interview with Chris Peterson, the parenting professor, and he gave us insight on how parents can connect with their kids at any stage in life. Roll tape. <laughs> All right, well, welcome, Chris. Um, just to start off, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and kind of, you know, what led you into joining this profession? Yeah, you know, the, so my path is a little unusual, as most paths, you know, aren't right out of the textbook. But I did start in education, started teaching, and um, thankfully, oddly enough, my, my life was threatened by a student when I had a job out on the West Coast. Wow. And um, <clears throat> it really led me to having to be better with kids, especially when we talk about behaviors. And I remember going home one of those first early days, you know, in tears and thinking, I, I, I have to do something else. And I got into Love and Logic. Someone uh, mentioned it to me, and Love and Logic's been around since 1977. Doc, uh, uh, Jim Fay and Dr. Foster Klein created it as, um, as a really neat thing that, that's not a system or a program, but it's based on a set of principles. And that really... Uh, stuck with me. It's not like this lockstep approach thing uh, in, in working with kids because you're a dad, right? Yep, kids don't break the rules by the book. They find <laughs> little loopholes. Right, holes. exactly. And uh, Love and Logic was the thing for me to help um, work better with kids. And so when, when my own kids were born, I stepped out of the traditional classroom. And then this kind of just started taking off and we've been reaching thousands of families since. Can you tell me a little bit about exactly what Love and Logic is? You know, is it a program? Is it a classroom? Like, what is yeah. it and what, how does it help parents? Yeah, so it's a, it's a way of working with kids that really ups the odds that we raise responsible and respectful adults, really, because we're not raising kids, we're raising the next generation. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, one of the core tenets is allowing kids to make mistakes when the cost is small, right? So the soundbite we, we have in class is, the road to wisdom is paved with countless mistakes when the costs are small, so that we can develop this cause and effect thinking, so that a kid can think, hmm, I wonder how this next decision is going to affect my life versus, you know, who, who, who's going to be mad at me if I mess up? And it, it's not a system, it's not a program, but again, like I said, it's a based on a set of principles that helps limit the stress for the adults. And we get into how to never argue with kids and why it's important to have chores and contributions at home. So the, the full class is a six session course. And then I do a lot of workshops um, with professional development for teachers and educators and leaders around the, around the world. I just got back from Milwaukee, so it was kind of fun. How long does this uh, session last? So, the f attend? yep, the full class is called Parenting the Love and Logic Way, and it's a six session course. Right now, I have a group going where we meet on Sundays from 4 to 6 uh, p.m. on uh, virtually through Zoom, and that's been a big hit, especially in Wisconsin. Uh, in, in you know December, January, and February, it's nice to be able to to, to kind of just reach into people's homes and uh, make those connections. Probably not the same as a live face-to-face -face, uh, class, but um, the the feedback has been tremendous. And then on Tuesdays right now, I'm running a class called Adult Supporting Youth with Challenging Pasts, and that really is love and logic with a tr trauma lens. Okay. You know, working with kids with high A scores, and uh, that one is that's that one I call graduate level love and logic, and we really get into um, healing the brain through that course. Mm -hmm. okay. Eric, I mean, you have a son, you know. Yes. How important is that, you know, relationship right. to have such a strong one between a parent and a child, mm -hmm. and like, how mm -hmm. does it impact a kid's life going forward? Right. Uh, you, I mean, you bring up that point of relationships, and that's a foundational. I didn't mean to step on your words. You're fine. I, that's the that's the foundation of love and logic is creating what I call non-manipulative, bulletproof relationships. Mm -hmm. um, is there any cost to take this class, or what's the details? Well, it's interesting, and I you know I always try to figure out that sweet spot for people. Um, uh, a lot of school districts in the last two years have been sponsoring it. Okay. Uh, generally, it's $84 per screen, and then that includes everything. That includes the workbook, that includes access to me. Uh, I run a closed Facebook group for each session. So a lot of Q&A. It's all about creating the village. Mm -hmm. And I just had a mom last week. She called me. She's like, Chris, I, I, I feel like if anything, you know, beyond the skills and the strategies and the techniques, I feel like you're giving us permission to forget some of those or um, you know, not listen to some of those pressures we have in our culture and our society and parent how we really know is best for kids. And that was kind of a heartwarming thing to hear. Okay. Because you, as a dad, you, yeah. you feel pressure sometimes to, oh, absolutely. to do. And, yeah, and, and it's, whether it's r real or perceived, it can change the way we work with kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, being a parent myself, and like you said, there's really no instruction manual to being oh, a parent. It's right. just, you know, here's your kid. Oh, gosh, let's hope we don't make any mistakes. I know, and I still do. And, oh, and, yeah. and I still t I teach the class anyway. And I, I kind of joke it's probably more for me and trying mm -hmm. to raise my two now teens. And uh, to your point, I... I was down in Westby area, and I, I had this kind of big, strong guy come up to me, and he's like, Chris, I, I wasn't sure about this class. And I said, oh, yeah, Dan, tell me about that. And he's like, well, you know, the saying, kids don't come with manuals. I said, yeah. He goes, but I feel like you gave us a really good roadmap to navigate those tough times. And I think he's taken the class four times now. Wow. So oh, wow. I been, love that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess kind of like what... What makes you want to keep doing things like this? You know, yeah. does it ever get almost repetitive? You know, constantly teaching the same thing, or are you also learning something new at the same time? Yeah, always learning nuances, right? And it's just like any whether it's a sport, we keep practicing. We don't just mm -hmm. say, "Well, I'm good now," you know, because like with parenting, like a skill, if you don't use it, you kind of lose it. So yeah. it, there is a selfish component to, to it. To be honest with you, I wanna, I get one crack at being a dad when the kids are little and 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 young and developing, and I and I want to do that. I, I will add that these techniques work on spouses too, and I imagine co-anchors, so I don't know. <laughs> if, <laughs> I think I hear Derek over but, there. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, and, and that's the point too, is we do have some fun. We do have a lot of fun and, and have some laughs. And I keep doing this because it needs to be, it's my belief that we, 
let me start that again. I, it's my belief that it, it, we're all based in prevention here and in, in raising that next generation of world-class citizens. And a lot of times we wait until there's a problem, right, and then try to fix it, and that's okay. Um, but if we can come from a prevention-based perspective, um, I call it the, wa the bottled water effect. You know, 30 years ago, I, I thought there's no way someone's going to buy bottled water. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, that's all you can find. Yeah. And I think that a, a solid parenting class like this, or I work with teachers too, can be like the next bottle of water. If we can make it cool and accepted and realize that this isn't, you know, preachy, we can have a good time doing it. And the other thing is parents start to realize, oh, I'm not the only one, right? And there's some, there's some forgiveness with that. All right. Thanks so much for yeah, taking time you. to talk to us. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And Dad, we'll have... <laughs> man, it's a hard job. Yes, it is. Good for you. Yes, all right. Is. Well, thank you so much. And we'll have all of this information posted on our website, sure. news8000.com, as well as any resources on how to sign up, as right. well as the website. Yeah, right. awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Chris hosts classes throughout the year. And to apply for one, you can go to his Facebook page, at The Parenting Professor. Well, it sure is a very cloudy, but also a pretty gusty start outside this morning. Here's a look at those current conditions in La Crosse, and you can see as the sun is rising, it's showing all those thick, cloudy skies overhead. Temperatures in La Crosse now are at 38 degrees, with a feel like of 28, though, when you factor in westerly winds at around 18 miles an hour. Now, here's what we can expect throughout the rest of the morning. It will continue to remain cloudy and windy around 20 mile per hour wind speeds with gusts up to 30 at times. And there is a slight chance of seeing a light rain snow kind of mix here for portions of lacrosse around 10 and then cloudy skies temperatures hovering right around that freezing mark uh, for most of the day temperatures here for this morning at 46 but remember we're going to continue to cool down throughout the day underneath the windy and chilly conditions that we'll be dealing with west northwest winds 20 to 30 miles an hour here at times and for tonight we drop down to 17 the wind speeds calm down 10 to 15 miles an hour coming out of the north but that northerly wind is going to bring us down as far as our temperatures to more of a season reasonable type of level here for this time of year. So watch out for a little bit of rain and snow here mixed early for the morning commute, cloudy and windy for the mid commute. And then by this evening, the wind speeds die down, but it will continue to remain on the cloudy side, though, for your evening commute. We'll talk more about this in the full weather forecast after the break, but also coming up in your buzz report, uh, the actress who's launching an all new dating app. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, it sure is a very cloudy, but also pretty windy start here across the Cooley region. A look at those current conditions it currently show us that we're looking at 35 now in Eau Claire with those cloudy skies. Westerly winds at 14. We're looking at 14 mile an hour wind speeds here in Winona. Cloudy skies at 34. La Crosse, westerly winds 18 miles an hour. Temperatures at 38 degrees and very cloudy. We will continue to remain cloudy with temperatures also dropping into the 30s steadily uh, throughout the day. In fact, we could be below freezing uh, as early as around 8 o'clock this evening. Look all the rain that moved through yesterday, uh, mainly during the late morning, afternoon, and also overnight. We saw some rain here move through, but recently we have cleared out. Only a few scattered, very light areas of some rain or snow, uh, mainly focused here along southern Trempolo into western Jackson County, also portions of extreme northern La Crosse County, but this is very, very light, very, very minimal, and in fact, it looks like we're starting to see some drier air move in to get rid of the remaining uh, precipitation, but this is still in response to this very strong low pressure system, which is now going to be packing some pretty gusty conditions and you probably noticed that here already maybe hearing it outside from your bedroom window and it looks like it's going to continue here for a while. Let's talk about the uh, current gusts right now. 20 to 30 mile per hour gust uh, being measured across much of the area, especially to the south. And again, we're going to continue to remain uh, pretty windy here. It looks like throughout the day. These are sustained wind speeds anywhere between around uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour that could become possible for much of the morning and those winds are expected to continue to pretty much remain in that similar uh, area here as we head into the afternoon. So it's really not until around the evening and also as we head into tonight when those wind speeds will be allowed to relax and subside as that low pressure system continues to exit the area. And so will the rain and snow also exit the area too as long as that system also continues to exit here too. Only a couple of light areas of rain or snow are possible mainly to the north here throughout the morning. And then we're pretty much cloudy and much colder here throughout the day for much of the area which will continue as we head into the evening and also into 
to much of the night as well. Now, if you look to the south, we're watching this next system that is going to clip us here to the south and our southern communities may feel a little bit of some light snow here. Move in overnight tonight and also into early tomorrow morning, and it does look like that. We may even see a few light instances of some light snow here across portions of our southern areas as we head into the early afternoon before it all begins to clear out as we head into this evening or heading into tomorrow evening rather and snowfall accumulations very, very light only around a trace or so with higher totals across south central Wisconsin. But here's six o'clock tomorrow and you can see we're just left over with a mainly cloudy day. Let's take a look now at your eight day forecast and you can see that we will be looking at uh, some much more milder conditions on the way for this weekend. Highs will climb back into the low 40s, something that we've been used to here for a while, but it does look like we're going to cool down once again as highs drop into the 30s as we head into next week with a slight chance of snow possible again by Tuesday. Actress Rebel Wilson is entering the dating game, but not for herself. She's launching a new dating app called Fluid. Wilson tells People Magazine the app is different because it gives users the option to define their sexuality, but not say what gender you're looking for. She calls it love with no labels. Wilson says the app helps users make connections based on their actual qualities and not their gender. The Fluid app will be available later this month. Los Angeles, a city of angels, more like the city of dirty little secrets. People pay me to look into the activities of its finest citizens. I'm a private detective. The name is Philip Marlowe. Liam Neeson plays Raymond Chandler's famous detective in Marlowe. The film is billed as Neeson's 100th film. Diane Kruger and Jessica Lange co-star in the noir film noir crime thriller set in 1930s LA and is directed by Oscar winner Neil Jordan. Marlowe is now in theaters and sounds exciting. Sound does sound exciting. Yeah. Speaking of thrillers, do you have a favorite one? Oh gosh, mm. I, I, that's a tough one to it. You put me on the spotlight literally yet again. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite one? Um, I'm a, I like thrillers. I would say like any spy thriller. So I am a big like Bond, Mission Impossible, okay. um, Kingsman. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No, that I, I highly I've, recommend. I've heard some good things about that. So one. good. I want to check that one out. Yeah. All right. Well, it's time for Look Who's Eight now. We uh, yeah. A bunch of birthdays to celebrate here today, do so. Let's get right to it. I want to wish Harry a happy eight months. Uh, Harry is always smiling and is a happy little man with a lot of personality too. Happy eighth birthday to Lillian. Lillian loves gymnastics and being a great sister. Happy eighth birthday to Hayden. Uh, Hayden loves to wrestle, uh, play softball, and uh, playing with the farm animals too. Happy eighth birthday to James. James loves to play basketball, build Legos, and make snowmen. Well, happy 88th uh, to Marlene. Now, Marlene loves quilting and caring for her beautiful flower garden. And a happy 98th to Wally. His family sends their love and best birthday wishes and wants him to enjoy his day at the American Legion and VFW. Well, if you know a special someone turning eight months, eight years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. Just to upload their photo to our website, news8000.com. Look for the submit pictures button under our home tab on the website. Well, stay with us. We have everything you need to know today in five minutes or less. Your morning news now is up next. We have an update on the investigation of a racist incident at Black River Falls High School. The BRF School District Superintendent has confirmed to News 8 Now that the staff member accused of making a racist comment has resigned. The student recorded the exchange last week and reported it to high school officials. In an interview last week, the student said she hopes things change because people who look at people of color look at them different. Protesters and anti-protesters showed up at an all-ages Valentine's Day drag show. The drag show took place at the Bronze Dragon. The protesters carried signs across the street telling people to keep kids away from the drag show. One protester says he's happy about the venue being an alcoholic-free bar, but is concerned about kids going to the show. We just feel that children are very impressionable. And so the fact that they are being influenced by adults in a otherwise adult setting, in our opinion, is um, inappropriate. 
The owner of the Bronze Dragon says the space is open to everyone. This is a grand opening celebration for the tavern and they wanted to show that everyone is welcome. So far we have no kids here. Um, it's just an all ages show, which means it's PG. Um, so uh, costumes are modest and the content of the songs is not explicit. So parents can make their decision on whether or not they want children in. But so far we don't have anyone under the age of 18 yet. The owner says there are no hard feelings between the Bronze Dragon and the protesters. It's Bus Driver Appreciation Week, a chance to celebrate the people who carry the most cargo. Also this week, the DMV is extending a waiver for some bus driver license requirements to help address a bus driver shortage. Those looking to get their school bus license test won't be required to identify what's under the hood However, West Salem's transportation director believes understanding the machine is a vital part of the job because they're carrying irreplaceable values. So I feel like all of my drivers should be able to identify and, and um, verify that the bus is in good working order before they leave. Director Rick Klein says school districts across the region and country are short on drivers, but doesn't think making the test easier is the best solution. He says attracting and keeping drivers on staff starts with respect and culture. And as you head out the door this morning, keep in mind it is a little bit windy out there. Cloudy skies, maybe a very slight chance of rain or snow, but I think for the most part we can say that it will be cloudy and windy, especially this morning and also into the early afternoon. Now those winds will subside late this afternoon and also into this evening. Skies will continue to remain cloudy though, however. Let's take a look now at your eight-day forecast. We're going to be keeping in those snow chances in the forecast for tomorrow, but it does look like it will be mainly focused to the south, followed by drying conditions on Friday with a high of 31 before warming back up into the 40s this weekend. And I know we all can't wait for that. <laughs> Body, but I think that will take the mild temperatures before it does get cold again mm -hmm. by next week. You know what? Just just looking at the bright side. Looking on the bright side. Yeah, you have to. I mean, it may not be very bright outside right now. It's cloudy, <laughs> but hey. That got, was clever. Yeah, we have very to. Very clever. Yeah, I, I try, I try. Uh, no pun intended, but we have to try to at least mm -hmm. uh, get ready for a nice warm weekend, though. Well, speaking of bus drivers, at least it's not, you know, a period of time where they have to, you know, maybe call snow days. Yeah, which, exactly. um, I don't know if students are so happy about that. Yeah, but I think they're happy they don't have to deal with it on the roads, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't forget to keep up with news of the day on News 8000. Com. And we'll have the latest updates to today's top stories on News 8 now at noon. Have a great day. We'll see you back here in just a few hours. And we'll probably pull up that city cam. Look at there that cloudiness. Is. So cloudy. Still looks pretty, oh. though. <laughs>